Are you a baseball guy? No. <laughs> I just like having the baseball hat on, you know. Like, and here's a true story. So any of our listeners out there, at my last job, Towson, the guy that was our – he was in charge of the weight room. Um, and the head basketball guy and I and a couple of my assistants, we like to wear hats, right? Like Doyle used to wear a hat in the weight room. Like it's not a big deal to wear a hat. We're, we're like we're, we're working at athletics. And he's like, we know we're not going to wear hats. It's not not professional to wear hats. And I'm like, I, I, at first I was like, come on, what are we talking about? And then I was like, he's like, no, I'm serious. I was like, okay, what's next? Like, we all have to wear matching colored shirts, like, and then a polo. Like, what are we talking about, man? Like, we're lifting weights. And I asked the players, I was like, when I wear a hat, do you think I'm less professional? They're like, the answers that they said was like, do you have, it makes no sense that you're not a professional if you have a hat on, so. There's an aside for everybody. Welcome into the podcast. We're going to talk about hats today. That's the main, that's <laughs> that the main sounds topic. like something KF would say. Oh, yeah, we're just going to talk about hats. And... All right, everybody. We're going to get going here. All right. Uh, first off, we're going to talk we got a bunch of guys wearing hats. Can okay. we grow up? <laughs> we, we went over this in the beginning of the year. I've been getting a lot of... Uh, We've had no questions or anything about hats, by the way. So to just 90 seconds of hats. I think Justin looks good in a hat. Appreciate it. So what hat? So is that a team hat? Is that a Boston Red Sox hat? No. This. So you're get ready for your mind to be blown. You're a Yankees fan. You're a Yankees fan. So it's a Yankee hat. I grew up a Yankee fan. Wow. Um, and for some reason, just having the Yankee fitted. Uh, Jay-Z is my favorite rapper. And he's got a, I feel like I, he, in one of his songs, he's like, the blue Yankee fitted. I'm like, you know what? There it is. <laughs> the blue Yankee fitted. Man, we're like, I don't listen to music anyway. Actually, I have been listening to music more often. Um, like when I do a, when I really have to like drop the hammer. Yeah. Um, most of the time I listen to podcasts Same. When, I'm, when I'm training. I just see it as like an efficiency thing. Like I, I hate. Couldn't agree more. I think maybe we talked about this already. I, I personally will that sip of coffee just made me like that was like almost that was pavlonian right there <laughs> I, I think i need to go make another another latte this morning uh i can't like i have all these podcasts that i like that are you know whether they're like hobby podcasts i like listening to crossfit podcasts i have um mind pump there's some strength conditioning stuff like and i feel like i learn a lot like that's my learning yep. nowadays uh and if i don't listen to them i have enough to like fill basically all the time during my week and if i don't listen to them i feel like i left something on the table like yeah. i like to the point where like when i when i drop the kid off at daycare i immediately turn the podcast on on the way home that was my question immediately not when she's in the car because we we talk back and forth she's starting to talk a little bit so you know we have these she'll or she at least can give one word answers or we'll talk about like oh you see the bus like she loves school buses on the way there she have a spotify playlist that you play no no we don't uh no uh if we if if she really is like very content just looking out the window and seeing stuff that's happening in the morning and if, if, uh, if she's like, she gets a little whiny, like, you know, you give her a, give her a stuffed animal or, you know, every once in a while, if it's like a half hour ride or more, then we'll throw her like the phone, put on some, I don't know, Rachel or any, any Paw Patrol wiggles, whatever. Um, but yeah, like if I, like when I'm making breakfast, like 45 minutes ago, I was like making eggs. I've got the podcast on. Like if I'm not, if I don't have a podcast on, I feel like I'm like, I'm wasting my time. If I'm not do, if I'm not listening to a podcast and doing whatever I'm doing, uh, it like hurts me, like it hurts my soul. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, the Yankees, the blue fitted. I'm going to have to, uh, I'll have to get one of those. <laughs> Since I'm like, I've never been a hat guy, but as I got, as my hair got worse and worse and like, it was just like, oh boy, I would wear hats. And now I have to wear, like, if I, if I, if I wear a hat, the go-to is a bucket hat. Okay. Like in the summer. That was a big deal when we made the, you know, when we would get you guys hats. Cause we'd always do, we'd always do a hat or a shirt right in the, in the off season. You guys apparently always loved them. And we did regular hats for a while. 
And then I remember Kittle wanted a bucket hat and like Josie and some other guys. And so like I went into the staff. Guys who had like, pull. Yeah. I was like, hey, coach, like, you know, guys want bucket hat this year. He's like, oh, fuck. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> All Actually, right. I found uh, I found these hats. Oh, this found this guy. Oh, yeah. Haven't has never. Hold on. Been I'm going to one up you. Okay. I think I know where you're going. And I have. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that that's a good one. That's a good one. I have the so I've got the championship one here too. Those hats, those those white gray ones that we got, those were after the Purdue game, right? Yeah, and I didn't agree with not letting you guys have the the trophy. Like I I didn't believe in that one, but that, I had, that was above my pay grade. Did they not have the trophy there? No, they didn't want the West trophy. Like somebody was like, oh, you know, like in hockey, they don't, they don't have the trophy. I was like, we're not playing hockey. Like, but. So one of the better hats we've ever gotten. This is a fitted as well. Oh, yes. I was so jealous of that hat. Yeah. Th I mean, this hat is. That's gorgeous. That's about as clean as it gets. I mean, yeah, we got absolutely fucking rocked. <laughs> Nobody needs to know that. We're, ten, we're about almost 10 years away from that. I think everybody remembers. It's hard, <laughs> it's hard not to. The Rose Bowl hat is good. And then um, I think we got a hat in my last year that I just found because I put up like a hat hanger in my closet. This episode is just like full of fucking elite stuff, by the way. Uh, it's the best. It just says Iowa football on it in yeah. gold, like block lettering. And then it's got the Nike swoosh on the side and it's a fitted flat bill and it's clean. And I just never wear hats. Like they're so irrelevant to my life. Um, anyway, this is what you talk about when, uh, you get blown out 35 to seven. Oof. Brutal. First half was good though. <laughs> I, the first half was good. The f that's an, I, listen, anybody that like, come on now, anybody that's listening to this, you know, that that's an Iowa first half against a good team. It's seven nothing. The defense makes turnovers. You're in the game. It's got the reminiscence of other close games. Like, sure, it wasn't eight six against Michigan, but you're in it. You're going into the locker room saying, "Hey, let's get it together." You know, we're in this. It's a, it's a one point or one possession game, and then it Keep, just unraveled. Yeah. Well, and that's it's almost like you you're you're fighting against what eventually did happen. That, that just absolute – and it was even worse. It was exacerbated because of the turnovers in their territory. Um, like, I don't care if it's Ohio State or – Northwestern. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. If you if you, if you you start a possession, you get, get the kickoff, first play uh, on the one specifically, Cade steps up into the pocket and maybe goes to run, or I don't know if he was going to try and pass, but the ball gets knocked out of his hands, and they recover it on, like, the 27. Like, they have 27 yards to go. Like, it doesn't matter that they have the most explosive offense in the country. Like, a, a non-explosive offense is probably going to score points there. So, things, I mean, turnovers are brutal, but especially when they happen there. Um, people hate the, and it it's like this, it, it, it meshes into the style that Iowa football is known for. But they hate the, um, a lot of the complaints this week have been, uh, Iowa slash KF play to not lose the game, especially versus these big opponents. All they're trying to do is keep it close so that they like, so that they're close in the second half. And like, I get it. I, I don't know if what they're asking for is like, we should try and win and beat them as it like, or, or play the game and, and score points on them. Like we would any other team. I understand that idea. But like knowing what it's like to play those teams, knowing the roster, like how many stars their roster has versus ours, and like just the general talent and general output of what those two teams are gonna do. Like I hate to say it, but like I think the best way to do it, unless you just come out and you are for some reason scoring and you're able to go up seven or fourteen points and it just naturally happens, forcing a game plan where you're trying to be super aggressive against a team that's going to make you pay for it. I just don't know if I agree with that. Like I going into at halftime seven zero was like, this is exactly what we wanted. It's exactly what you want. I don't know. 
the 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 one thing that I don't know how much strength conditioning talk we can really pull from this game. I find it I do find it interesting or or maybe would be interested in your opinion of like a roster that's so stacked loaded like that. What the difference is when you see guys what are what are this individual differences that you see in in guys that come in with that much talent out of high school? Like what is different about them that you wouldn't see in, in the versus like maybe like, you know, the kids from the farm towns in Iowa that come in. What what physically and um you know movement pattern wise, like what what is different, if anything? From you can just see when a kid when a kid comes in and you know they're different, right? Like you can just see it and feel it. And they're they're ranked higher. You know, they have their their stars or whatever. And it's just in the very simple things that we've talked about before where you're constantly evaluating. So in the warm-up, you're like, oh wow, that looks clean. Oh, yeah, look at that. Like, hey, they get into the weight room and man, their their hips look snappy doing this, and they've got awesome mobility here. Or man, you watch them jump, like seeing a young Tristan Wirfs do a broad jump at nine feet at that instant eight you're just like what oh my gosh or this kid jesus gibbs that was a transfer from uh, south carolina that we got at towson and and you just see him do a forward roll into a jump and you're like you got it right so when you see those kids you know that they have something they've been blessed physically and they have that gift so you you push them differently because the, the bar is is different for them in terms of their athleticism um, you know, you, you, you're obviously trying to get the most out of them. You're trying to get the most out of every kid genetically. The big takeaway from me, from the strength and conditioning side is kind of goes back to the psychology episode of you, you're now, you always tell the kids be avoid the noise, but at some point there's a signal coming through the noise and, and the signal that you are worry about is, man, we haven't beaten a, a ranked opponent and like, and it hasn't happened in a while. Yeah. And you, you, we have a good team and we're, we are good guys, but we keep turning the ball over. And like that happened to, to me at Towson in 21. Like we had a very healthy team. We had that kid, Jesus Gibbs. I talked about, we had all the Caleb Smith, these, you know, guys that made Bre like they, I had guys that made Bre uh, Bryce, Bruce Feldman's freak list, right. Oh, yeah. Cause they would do those things, but our quarterbacks turning the ball over. And then you start hearing the griping and you, as the head strength coach, you tell your assistants, Hey, be aware, like, cause they're going to have different relationships. And then you just start to gather data and you, you just, it's, it's a tough situation. Cause let's not forget that the weight room is therapy. You've kind of talked about it before, how good it feels. So when the guys are in the weight room, their guards are going to be down. They're going to talk to each other about how mm. they feel. Yeah. And that's one thing that you got to be, you, you have to be proactive about, cause you got to nip it in the butt. It's, uh, so it's, maybe the most fascinating thing to me, it's just like, so and it is quantifiable. Like if you have guys test, they run a certain rep, uh, drill, or they, they lift a certain amount of weight, but like, there's almost an unquantifiable way and just set of things that like true athletes do the way that they move. I personally haven't experienced a lot of that a little bit in the, in the change of direction that I always brag about. Um, like that's my one thing and i think when people watched me i hope that when people watched me do a 5105 drill which was my one single thing that i could compete with they were just like i i my one goal was i just wanted people to think there's no reason why this guy looks like that and but moves like that <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you would not look at me and then you watch me do a 5105 and you're like but how is he cutting so fast? And like, what? Why? Why is his time? It doesn't make sense. And everything Josh Jackson did, when I immediately think of like Ohio State, this roster that we just played, yeah. they have an entire roster, eleven guys on offense, eleven guys on defense, full of Josh Jacksons and Noah Fants and whoever else. Hawkinson. Ha yeah, just just these guys that like. They don't necessarily do or work any harder than some of these other guys. Sometimes they do, but that hard work isn't what's giving them this special gift. It's just something that they have. Like, I watched Noah Fant drag Josie in a harness tug of war. And like Josie in our in our class was like, Yeah, you don't want to go up against Josie. Like he's a he's the farm kid who's literally gonna drag you to the other side of the <laughs> to the farm <laughs> and uh 
Josie got absolutely bitched by Noah Fant. And Noah was like a freshman who was who weighed less at the time, I think. And I was like, oh no. Like that's true power and just natural athleticism and gift. Um, watching Josh r- do anything, like I said, was just like, that doesn't make any sense. Like this kid just, he's got different inside genetics that, that help him do this. And um, when you play it, when you play a roster full of those guys, that is demoralizing. Like that is tough. Uh, especially when, cause then it gets to the whole, Hard work can beat talent when talent doesn't work hard. Well, what if talent does work hard though? You know, <laughs> like that's the beauty. And like, that's what you're chasing is my offensive line coach. Oh, he always said, you can give it talent, but you can't give talent it. And when mm-hmm. you run into that and like, that's the thing, like you have to be that switched on and you have to, if you're going to have a chance, you have to do every little thing. Right. And you can't have those turn. And then, so the reason I bring it up is because like, if okay man a penalty like you can only be positive for so long because then after a while now you're just now you're truly our line and it's like come on hey we still got this it's like bro it's 21 nothing now we just turn the ball over again like shut up we got to just take we got to take this medicine and you just you do you got to sit back and let them take it is that tough for as a strength coach you're in a spot where you 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 guys were in this weird spot where you know Shit's getting out of hand. Yep. <laughs> but part of your job is part of everybody's job, right? Is to is to keep it together. Like be be mature, keep it together, and at bare minimum on the outside, make it look like with your words and your in your uh and your body language, make it look like you're still in this, you're still focused, you're still head forward towards the goal. But like you're walking up and down the sideline and you're like, we're getting this ass beat right now. And I don't know if there's anything I can say as a strength coach, that's going to make this any better. Like, what is that? Like you just find that you find the positives that won't show up in the play sheet, you know? So let's say a running back makes a real, like, let's say the right guard gets beat really bad, but the running back does a great job chipping and the quarterback can throw the ball. And you're like, Hey, running back great job doing yeah. your job that's not going to show up and you just you find those little positives because when you're getting beat like that sure you might have a moment one of the players they might get sad and discouraged but how do they then respond from it because you're yeah. going to learn a lot from them and if they're not you know fighting back in a situation like that then that's going to show you even more and you you know you don't you don't completely write people off be like huh that's interesting i didn't think so and so would show that color And then you, you know, you just download it. And we talked about it before. Um, You sometimes have to act like you won after a loss. So you start to find those positive plays that did happen. And then now you're spinning it because you're like, hey, man, we got Washington that just beat a top 10 team coming in. And they're four and two. They went to the national championship last year. If they're not licking their chops, thinking that they're coming into Kinnick to do something with a big noon kickoff, you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think the finding the details, you have to get a little bit more nuanced, probably, because a lot of the time, if things are going well for you guys, you can just kind of ride that general flow of like, hey, everybody's kicking ass right now. Let like just more generalized statements, more generalized support to the guys. But like you can't you can't ride that when when stuff starts to go poorly, because there's a reason something's going bad. And more than likely, some guys are going to be doing good and some guys are going to be closer to the reason that things are going bad. And if you start to shout out generalized, you know, support and hype for for guys, they're going to know like, oh, this guy's totally bullshitting. He knows that like the line's not blocking right now. And you can't you can't lie because the kids will know and you can't and like that's where you have to. I was going to ask, did, did you ever catch yourself like saying something or like one of the guys looked at you in the middle of you trying to like hype somebody up and they're like, dude, come on. No, because I think I had a really like I had a good pulse on knowing the reality because like, I, again, I had, you know, four assistants and myself, so five and I'd be I'd like I'd take in their information. So I would trust what my assistants were telling me. So I would know if, you know, the defense was mad at this group or whatnot, because. 
I had people filling me in. So I would yeah. like, I would apparently what I used to do is I would say the things that the position coaches wouldn't say. Like yeah. if we're playing terrible, I'd be like, you know, I called it my Sunday sermon or, or whatever. Cause I'd have the opportunity to talk to the whole team before yeah. they go to the team meeting. And I'm like, listen, we didn't play well move on. Like, but here's the thing. This is your day to be sad about it. Yeah. I, I wanted them to have Sundays off so they can, everybody can get away and detach. That wasn't the case. All right, we're here. This is your day to be sad, mope around, whatever, but we've got to put it behind you the next day. Um, and, and you can't, you have to praise in public and, you know, correct in privacy. So it'd be like, Hey, okay. Yeah. You know what? Online, you are not blocking well right now. Own it. We talked yeah. about it in the slight edge, the man in the mirror, like, don't like, okay, if you're doing bad, fix it, own it and fix it. Yeah. The emotional side of the game is. It's real. Yeah, it, it's, it's real. It's like sort of underrated too, because fans don't, they do fans think about that. They see celebrations. They see like the good parts and every once in a while, they'll see the blowups. Like, uh, I don't know if you caught the, at the end of the Alabama game, that kid kicking the ball. Oh man, you would have <laughs> Doyle, Doyle might have fucking murdered this kid on the field, Justin. What happened? I'm gonna find. Hold it. on, no, no, no. It was it, it was 29 at the end of the game. Like he was mad about something. Nah, dude. I it, oh, <laughs> because I can edit for anybody watching the YouTube video. You're gonna take 30 seconds here to just like grab another coffee for yourself or uh, or whatever. On the audio version, you guys will just it'll literally cut right to it. But I'm gonna find this, and you. So this kid's name is Malachi Moore. Huh. He's a D back for Alabama, and obviously, for those that don't know, Alabama just got upset by. Uh... Spoiler alert. Yeah, they just got upset by Vanderbilt. Find... Yeah. Um. The fighting uh, Tyler Barnes. He is at Vandy, isn't he? <laughs> No, Tyler was, he was at Vandy. Or he was at Vandy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was with Franklin and then came back. Okay, let me see if I can share this. Okay. Hard, tough video here. This is the end of the game. They just got a first down, so there's a minute 10 left on the clock. They just got a first down. Alabama's officially lost the game. Vanderbilt's just kneeing it out right now. He throws his mouth guard. Oh, Oh, and it's just, it cuts it off there. So after this, he throws his mouth guard. He's bitching out his his other players, like basically throwing a hissy fit on the field. The ref, they just need it. The ref grabs the ball, goes to set it back down. He goes up to the ball, like all the line, he goes up in between the linemen, kicks the ball. Oh, God. That's like terrible. But like the emotional side of the game, right? Like some, you have to remember, the like as fans who, Fans aren't great at, you know, uh, managing their emotions either. We learn. I, I, I learned that after every Hawkeye win. Like some of the shit that is said on Twitter uh, is just, it's unbelievable. Like, and I know a lot of times alcohol is mixed with that too. True. So there's, it's just like a bad combination. You should just yeah. keep yourself off social media. But these kids, some of them are literally 18. Like the two best receivers in the country right now are 17 and 18 years old. Yep. The guy from the one we just played who one handed it. That was, that was, I mean, that's play. just like that. You, you watch those plays and you're like, okay, we're not 37 was out class. Like you, you could just kind of tell, which is, I mean, this is a learning moment for him. And then the guy from Alabama that's making unbelievable plays. Yep. Um, there's these, they're, they're literally kids. Correct. As, as I've gotten older, through the 20s now 30 every year more and more and this is probably natural and it's not necessarily reality but like the more and more you feel like oh if it doesn't matter if you're 21 you're still a kid like anybody in college is still a kid hell even people that are like young adults 23 24 25 those are still kids yep I feel like at 30, like I'm actually not a kid anymore. Unfortunately, uh, I mean, if you don't have, if you don't have a child, if you don't have a kid and you're 30 and you're still like, yeah. you could still be living the life as a kid, but you're not. No. Yeah. At 30, you're not really a kid though, but at 17, 18, I mean, these kids were literally, we talked about it uh, earlier this year when uh, the Reese Vandersee had a great first game. Uh, he wasn't even at spring ball. He was at prom. Yep. These guys don't even know how to manage their emotions necessarily. 
like they're still figuring out their own emotional they have all the they each each one of these kids has their own past their own childhood that they grew up with their own potential traumas that they're bringing uh what happens when a coach gets in their face what happens when they hit really bad adversity on the field what happens when they get embarrassed on a play and like part of a strength coach's job like aside from also the 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 regular football staff like part of a coach's job is to help these kids in response to like tough situations and like leading them through that and it's such like a no one ever sees that part of it but you're really dealing with some like some like mind fuck on the sideline with a lot of a lot of times like yeah, there was and something like that like you got to you know you it's almost better that he didn't like that they didn't come off the field right away like let everybody calm down right like cuz the coaches i'm sure were mad um and i'm sure the kid was mad and shoot today's tuesday i'm sure by now he he probably regretted it and regretted it on sunday and monday which is just why i so advocate for players having sunday off players and coaches everybody just needs to detach it yeah. you need to switch the thursday and wednesday thursday and sunday it has to be off really everybody. it has to be it cannot you cannot come in on sunday you can't it needs to be off really that's your that's your opinion is you just it has to be off and i've been trying to i tried to change it at towson since covid um, and it needs to change. It cannot be th like Thursday. You can do it right. Thursday does not need to be the day off. Thursday should not be the day off. Um, it should be Sunday and Thursday can be a no sweat day. It can be a, uh, you could call it yoga FRC because you understand that stuff, you know, accessory movements, but like that's your day to, you know, bro out and feel really good, but you cannot, you need to have Sunday off. So you switch the so for those listening in a in a football schedule you get, I, I imagine everybody does it this way. Everybody everybody gets one full day off during the week. It's like one complete off day, no football, no nothing, basically. Which is even more why it needs to be Sunday because what do you have to do on Thursday? Uh, go to school. Oh yeah, you still have to go to school, so you never get a day to just be a human. True. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, a lot of times I wasn't going to school on Thursday anyway. But, uh, the uh, yeah, so everybody gets one full day off from football activity, and then, and when when I came into Iowa City in 2013, the original way they did this was Mondays, which maybe is the worst option for that i don't there's just like no reason for monday to be an off day but so monday was our off day so we would come in on sundays and we still would once we switch the schedule you do like a recap you know first watch of the film uh shake out run all this stuff and then bounce out of there it was usually like two hours worth of stuff two to three depending on what group you're in because if you're in the young group that we talked about before you're actually in there lifting beforehand. Like a pretty hard lift sometimes we'd walk in there. And Bro, we're doing quarter rack squats, like 600 pounds. <laughs> just guys are just in there grinding. And I'm just like, oh, God. Glad I'm not in the developmental uh, card. Um, then Monday, you just have like a full off day. And early on, especially for the freshmen, you're just like, all right, I'm headed to the learning center. I'm going to log in. I'm going to open my laptop, plug the charger into the laptop, make sure I got enough juice, and I'm going to get through three or four episodes of my favorite <laughs> so I can log my learning center hours. <laughs> no football, no meetings, no practice on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, practice days, and then fast Friday. Eventually, we move that off day to Thursday, which is better than Monday, in your opinion. Yes. Yes and no. Cause I could, you could make a case for it depend on what you do on Sunday, that it could be really good to let you have uh even longer recovery. So you don't, you don't provide, you don't think there's any value in like shaking out the legs on a run? No, no? I don't. I don't because especially with the run based off of like, 
you like you at your position yeah but be a running back be a quarterback be i mean shoot be your brother playing both and i know not everybody plays both ways but be your brother play both ways high school football and then go do a shakeout be the running back be josie be somebody that has a lot of contact the last thing you want to do is pound on your feet yeah so you shouldn't be doing a shakeout run um you should if you want to do something educate the kids on hey here's a home mobility program that you can do you talk about the fact that kids used to love being like some kids family would drive to a game now on sunday guess what the kids can do they can have a meal with they they can fill up and spend time with their family on sunday and then you don't have to do anything until like we talked on these on the shows before about a high cns day and a low cns day now your high days can stay high your low days can stay low you can truly have an off day make monday a low cns day so what we did at towson was we had our upper body lift was actually on monday because they were still recovering from the game so that's you make it on monday low cns upper body you're getting pumped you're feeling good yeah tuesday's a high day at practice wednesday is your lower body lift day and then thursday you can frc them you can stretch them uh if you have a facility like iowa's you can cold tub everybody you can hot like you can do you can get really good about it right and like i just can't stand this whole notion of it ain't broke don't fix it because it's like well you can always change it, it, we talked about it again before it's about the the principle the principle will never change but the methodology will change so like the back squat versus uh a goblet squat if somebody was hurt or training age okay like you can change your methodology or your principle if it has to but the methodology should always be willing to change yeah for sure yeah you can never close it down if, if you're if you close something down it mentally like oh this is just the way it has to be like that's probably bad um i was gonna say on sundays i think your best i think the best look and of course it's gonna be tough with compliance because not everybody's gonna do it because again like we just talked about you're working with 17 18 to 22 year old kids who are like i'm not doing this uh but i think the best thing would be like a 20 minute like mobe just like static stretching some rolling like anything to feel good so take them through 15 to 20 minutes of like a static mobe session like a little bit of soft tissue work on your own with a with a lacrosse ball or a a foot roller at home like i literally have a foot roller on my desk right now yeah already um like that feels really good like i i love doing that after like a hard day of training or or session um and it was a thing where at our house in college, all of the girlfriends at the time would just like hang out at the house on Sunday when we would go to football for three hours because they'd stick around. Some of them lived and was, were going to Iowa, but like my, my girlfriend, now wife, she, it, it always sucked. Cause I'd have to leave at like noon. Exactly. We couldn't get lunch together. She would just hang out at my house and like, I don't know, study her school stuff or go to the mall or something. And then like, I'd come back, we'd hang out, we'd do like an early dinner and she'd leave and go back to, she w- went to central. Um, and it was so annoying. Cause it was like, ah, we, we get Sunday, but we don't really get Sunday. And, and we talked don't to, really get Thursday. Cause yeah, you're going to school. We talked about the bye week before the bye week Um, we talked about how like filling that cup is so important and like being able to like de-stress and, and like, hanging with your family especially if you're from far away and they like aren't going to be there yeah i i I agree with that i actually agree with that a lot i never thought you can fill your cup on a weekly basis smaller yeah like the kids from chicago or even the kids from northwest iowa like dude i when i i presented at a clinic in northwest iowa and that was a three and a half hour drive for me and i'm in ankeny like yeah josie was josie would make that drive and like sacrifice sleep so that he could go be at home freshman year there were there were nights where Josie would we'd have an eleven o'clock game, and Josie wasn't playing yet. Josie would at three o'clock hop in the car and go back home. Jeez. For like you know he'd get there at like dinner. He'd hang out from like six to ten. He'd wake up, drive back over to make it. But he he would be home for like less than twelve hours basically, or like fourteen hours. And he would make that drive like two and a half hours to Decorah and back. Um, 
and he would for a while he did it like every weekend because he just wanted to be home and with his family <laughs> and uh yeah it it doesn't necessitate you having to wait six weeks for a bye week so you can finally see your girlfriend or your family or get away from football yeah you're right i like it i like it thursday you would just make into like kind of would fill like sunday's gap or you would do yeah and you can move like you some places call it no sweat thursday but you just do instead of meetings in the like okay now by this point you had sunday off monday you're installing you're you're making your corrections you're talking about whatever the new opponent so for us we're in this case all right hey this is what went wrong with ohio state blah 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 blah. this is what we're going to introduce washington then you practiced washington tuesday you practiced washington wednesday hey y'all thursday let's look at the film here's what went wrong in practice here's what washington does now let's go onto the field and walk through it yeah hey you've been mobbed a little bit by being on the field and walking guess what now let's stay out there whether it's offense or defense or the whole team you got six strength coaches hey half the strength coaches take the offense over here take the defense over here you can do frc you can get 90 90 external internal shoulder pails rails all the things you can foam roll them stretch them when they're done give them a meal go about your day and then fast friday similar so much stuff. better now because think about this you said it before fast friday if somebody messed up a play it's like the end of the world well somebody messed up a play because yes body wise they had 48 hours and it's good for them but maybe they weren't in their playbook because they mm -hmm. wanted to finally detach yeah. well now they've been in their playbook less than 24 hours ago yeah. so now they don't make the same mental mistakes and they're better yeah they get a mental touch point in between wednesday and friday yeah. Bro, I tried so hard to get this change made since COVID. Like, if I showed you the PowerPoints, you know I, of anybody who does it that way? Yeah. So that was the frustrating part about being let go at Towson was that's what they were going to go to. Like this head coach was mm -hmm. going to Sundays off. I don't Man. know what he was going to do on Thursdays because he wanted to lift Tuesday, Thursday, and I'm just like, that's terrible. But at least he was going to give him Thursday off. Um, so. I have not heard of it. I heard of some schools that literally do force plate jumping with their players on Sunday after a game to determine what they do for recovery on Monday. I was like, why are you going to force plate jump everybody when you know it's going to say that they're fatigued yeah. from playing a game? Hey, like, right I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you the stats. Ready? They're all tired. <laughs> exactly. I was like, what are you doing? Like, you're just don't do it then. Like, sure, maybe you know maybe you do it tuesday wednesday like how we used to weigh you guys out on wednesday after practice to like yep. be a touch so it's like okay in the middle of the wednesday lift if you're going to vertical jump everybody cool but sunday after a game like yeah. i'll tell you what it's going to say they're gassed yeah and they're and supposed to be cns is uh like even when you feel even if you feel good like um like you subjectively get from a player like, yeah, I feel, I feel all right today. Like I played a game, I'm a little tired, but I feel pretty good. And then like, if you test them, we talk about grip strength or like a force plate jump or X, Y, Z test to kind of like test their C and you're like, yeah, you're not, you're not good. You're actually not good. Um, it's funny, especially those guys who are like mentally tough and they're like, yeah, I'm good. Which is why you need the force plate instead of just a jump mat, because the force plate will tell you your eccentric rate of force development, which will tell you like how you're actually loading your body. Sure, you might get the same jump number, the jump height, yeah. but how you produce it will help show your central nervous system fatigue. Yeah, man. Well, Washington's a big test. Yeah, They're not as bad as people thought they were going to be. Nope. I think they replaced almost every starter. Because they had a bunch of those six COVID years. Um, new coaching staff went to Alabama, took a bunch of players with them. A uh, bunch of guys transferred out, transfer portal, all this stuff. Um, so people thought like, wow, completely new. And they're four and two, right? And they're, they should be potentially six and oh. Because uh, I think they lost to Wazoo, like in a burner. And then... I forget. They lost to a Rutgers that, you know, they went Rutgers, from, yeah. and it was like, they went to Rutgers and I mean, everybody hears Rutgers, but it's like, uh, Rutgers was undefeated at the time and only lost to undefeated, uh, Indiana. So mm. Rutgers is, uh, 
Shiano Rutgers is a lot different than regular Rutgers. Let's also say that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's about to be this week. There's about to be a lot of games that are like, uh, between some past haves and have nots that like, I think Wisconsin plays Rutgers and Rutgers could definitely win that ball game. Um, there's a few other games as well. Got to get back on the horse. Three and two, you cannot, you like, and that's what I'm saying. In the weight room, you're hearing it. You're like, man, three and three doesn't sound nearly as good as four and two. Like, yeah. That's the reality in the weight room right now. And you're doing everything that you can to help shape that culture so it doesn't happen. Yeah. And I think emotionally, going back to that part of this episode, a lot of the fans are also going to feel better if you win the game. Like winning, winning masks a lot of, uh, a lot of the stink, right? Um, it's the best cure. And it's the same for the players. Like when those guys, if those guys can go back, get another win at home, good opportunity. They're favored in this game. I know Vegas doesn't mean shit, but they usually know what they're kind of talking about generally. Um, everybody's going to flip their script again and be like, okay, we got to win. You know, that's a, that's a good win against Washington, new team in the conference. They beat Michigan. They're not a bad team this year. And then it's like, yeah, we can, we can go 10 and two. Like the immediate focus is like, Hey, we, we can be 10 and two. Right. Good. That's the best they could be right now is 10 and two at the end of the year. So that's what the goal is. Amen. That's all we got. That's all we got on this uh, beautiful Tuesday morning. You guys will hear this on Friday morning and then it will take you into the game. Uh, early one tomorrow. 11 o'clock big noon kickoff. Like you said, Amen. it's going to be rocking in Iowa city. Um, we'll talk to you guys next week. Find us on the recap show, all of the other shows. And uh, hopefully we are four and two and not three and three. Cause I might be looking for a new gig or something else to podcast about. No one's going to be listening. Uh, we'll talk to you then. Peace.